podcast that is all about movies, life, and so much more. I really thank you all for taking the time to be here. I'm Jordan Anderson. This is my podcast, and and strap in for an interesting episode because I have my mother with me. Yeah, that's right. My mom is actually on a podcast. I don't even think she knows what a podcast is, but she's on it, and she's here. Linda Thicken, welcome. Hi, Jordan. Thank you for inviting me. You sound like such a mom when you said that. <laughs> Hi, Jordan. Hi, son. It's so special. <laughs> I, I am actually sincerely happy that you're here. I, I honestly cannot believe you're doing this. And Jordan and I both enjoy movies. Um, can I mention the movie that we saw last night? Or is yeah. that not? Yeah. We saw Cry uh, Macho. Yeah, with together. Clint Grandpa so. Eastwood. Which we had also seen his previous, probably a a better one. I mean, I know we're not going to talk about Cry Macho, but uh, Gran Torino was by far, I believe, one of his best movies. But anyway. Yeah, um, but uh, no. Let's change subjects. (sighs) It's fine. Oh, my God. (laughs) Just be yourself. You'll be be fine. but anywho, so yeah, my, my mom is actually here on the podcast, which it does mean uh, actually a great deal to me. Anytime I can have, uh, just be fortunate enough to have family or, or friends or anybody come on this, it, it's always a blessing. So I'm, I'm very much happy to have her here. But I do want to ask you, mom, do you actually know what a podcast is? Yes, it's an interview that's audio. Well, it doesn't have to be an interview, but yes, it is a generally an audio format for people to listen to people talk about things. And basically any subject is a podcast, is how I understand it. Yeah, just yeah, just about anything can be a podcast, that's true. Do you know of any? Do you listen to any? Joyce Myers Ministry. Joyce Myers? That's... Joyce Myers Ministry, that's probably the only podcast that I listen to. And that's like, uh, she's a pre- uh, preacher? Is that... Um, what, what, she what, meant would, it, well, what would she be? Uh, she's an evangelist? Oh, well, I'm not even going to um, get into that. I don't know what that means, but I, I know who she is, and I can see why I you don't like know if her. She's, a pe- she's just a speaker. A speaker. She has a ministry. She helps. Uh, she is based out of St. Louis. Um, she helps... Not only people in the United States, but uh, worldwide. She um, has a lot of charities. and. Well, there there you go, folks. There's a plug for Joyce Myers. I guess she's a cool lady, and my mom likes her, so go ahead and, and check her out wherever you can find her. Okay, so we're going to talk about the, the movie that we're actually here to talk about, which is Into the Blue. Um, now, this is actually a movie that came out in September of 2005, uh, it's got Paul Walker, Jessica Alba, Scott Kahn. Uh, I can't remember who the, the blonde actress is in the movie. She's honestly not that important for the sake of the movie. And then there's Josh Brolin. But as I typically do in these episodes, I will give you a bit of a synopsis for the movie so you get a sense of what it's about. And then I'm going to talk about it with my mother and see why it is this, that this movie is something that we wanted to talk about. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I just had the synopsis for it up here, so give me, well, I don't know why I had, why, why, why did they go away? That's, that's not a good synopsis. Where's the, Rotten Tomatoes always seems to have the best ones. All right, let's see. It is right here. Okay, so Diver Sam, played by Jessica Alba and Jared Paul Walker, love their life that they live in the Bahamas. But when their really shitty friends, Bryce and Amanda, visit, the couple take them on a treasure hunting trip where they discover more than they bargain for, being a downed airplane that is full of cocaine alongside of a famous uh, shipwreck. And unknown to Sam and Jared, Bryce, uh, dumb Bryce, which we'll get to because I know you love the character Bryce, Mom, hmm. uh, he makes a fatal mistake and decides to sell the cocaine, which angers a group of drug dealers who are now in hot pursuit of the divers being Paul Walker and Jessica Alba. So that is, uh, generally speaking, the story. But, Mom, this is a movie that I've actually watched with you several times. Why do we seem to keep coming back to it? Um, I believe that the movie, well, it's a romance. I like romantic movies. But um, I also enjoy movies that have a message um, about society, um, 
I enjoy a movie with a good story, the romance, drama, action, and I would say that this movie had all of them. And I very much enjoy a movie, and I prefer a movie that uh, touches on my emotions. If it's uh, kind of a phony story or kind of a hokey, uh, corny story, I don't buy into it. But if it's something that um, has a good message, I tend to like those kind of movies. So what do you see the message being for this movie? Uh, that money's not everything. <laughs> isn't it? Is it uh, though? <laughs> I mean, money money helps out. Money well, does help, but can it truly buy your happiness? Can buy you a jet ski. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm stealing Daniel Tosh's bit there. He he he's a comedian. He has this famous bit where he's just like, yeah, "Have you ever seen somebody sad and mopey riding around on a jet ski? It's impossible." Go back to your question again. What was the other question? What was it? Ah, here we go. <laughs> so, Mom, stay focused. Uh, I'm asking you, you talked about how you like messages in movies or, or movies that you can connect with in some kind of an emotional way. Yes. So, you said that you thought the message for Into the Blue was that oh. money is not worth the price that it always can come with, right? Correct. But it also touched on true friendship and people that you can trust and should not trust. Um, there was one part in the movie where, uh, is it his name Bryce, the character? Yeah, Bryce? I, yeah, he was played by Scott Kahn. Yep, and then Paul Walker's character is Jared, and they're having a debate about what they should do about this find, which I don't know if you're gonna go more into the spoilers. that. spoilers, you can, you can talk about as much yeah. as you want. Well, I'll let you talk about that part. Anyway, uh, Bryce is manipulating Jared and uh, to have him compromise his values. And Bryce is a lawyer and by trade, um, sorry lawyers that are listening out there, but they tend to not uh, always care about uh, the right or wrong. It's winning the case. Lawyers, you don't say. <laughs> hmm. Uh, now, Jordan, let's not be stereotypical. I will not. Don't tell me what to do on this mother. <laughs> um, so that, and then, uh, I don't know, I guess the message of love, like, true love, and yes, Jordan's mother does still believe in true love. And that you can find true love. And that's and that's good. Yes, that that, that is a, a positive positive message. It's not the first one I would have come to for this movie. I, I think like you, I think it's it's kind of asking the the moral question of you know how much money is really going to make you happy and at what length would you go to get it despite you know it compromising any moral values you might have or your safety, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, obviously, in the case of this movie, they have found treasure, and it's by a down plane full of drugs. So there's a there's a crime element going on um, alongside of it. So obviously, it's a very unique situation to be in. But 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 because his friend that was visiting is a lawyer and knows the loopholes in things, Sam, uh, Paul Walker's yeah Jessica uh, Alba yeah Jessica Alba. Uh, immediately they they both wanted to turn which they should have this plane into the authorities but because this buried treasure and they were also um, I don't want to say down on their luck they just lived a very simple life and they had dreams yeah. like we all do <clears throat> like wow winning the lottery would be fantastic I, I but it was but it was more than that. I mean, they wanted to work for what they had, but yeah. And so the working part was trying to be patient and find this treasure mm -hmm. on a legitimate uh, file your claim when you discover it. Mm -hmm. But because the the treasure was so near the plane, they actually found the plane first with little elements of the treasure being mm. close to it. Yes. Now I. I'm actually curious. I don't know if you thought about this before the movie, but I'm thinking about it when you're just talking about them living their simple life and, and everything like that. 
I always actually wonder just from the start of the movie, I mean, they both, Jared uh, and Sam, Paul Walker, Jessica Alba, it's clear from the, uh, the early onset of the movie that they live in the Bahamas. They're not just there on vacation. They live there. And I guess I, I always kind of wonder, I'm like, you know, why would they be in the Bahamas? I mean, I just, I don't know too many Americans that like live in that area and like would live there permanently and live like that. So oh I'm my just... gosh. If you had the chance to work there and stay there, well, would like, you not? It seems like I could, if I wanted to, I could hop on a plane tomorrow and go down there and work. But I mean, they were young. And I'm so young. She, she worked at like a sea, like a sea, uh, sea world type place, like a sea world place. And she taught about um, sharks. She, she did a, I don't you don't call it a class, but, I don't know. She did a show with yeah. sharks, and then he uh, would give um, scuba diving lessons. Yeah. So. But I'm just saying, like, you think they came from America to do that? Oh, absolutely. I don't think they're obvi- they're not obviously no, they're originally not... from the Bahamas. Correct. So I'm just curious, like, at what time do you think it'd be right for somebody that's young to be like, hey, let's just geographically le- relocate, let's leave America, let's just go. When you're young. When you are young. (laughs) Why not now? You can't do it, Mom? I have too many responsibilities that I'm tied to. Uh, Are they, though? Sell the house. Sell the car. Uh, Who cares? No. No? That's a whole nother subject, Jordan. But, yes, (laughs) it's creeped in my mind that I wish before I had... uh, I wish that I would have taken like a year or two off early in life when I had no responsibilities. And yeah, if I had to do it over again, hell yeah. I would have went to Bahamas, be a waitress, uh, help with the shipyard, um, whatever. You're going to work in a a shipyard? (laughs) Heck yes. Or like on a shipping or a, a fishing boat. Uh-huh. Or even a sailboat. I mean, in Hawaii, they had excursions with sailboats. I forget that you've been to Hawaii. I have never been. Yeah, so, yes. I see. So, the answer is yes. And that, let me, let me well, talk. Okay, go ahead. Let me interject. Very good. Uh, I have never been, I mean, I don't want to get into too much philosophical, but I've never been much of a risk taker. You? Mom? My mom? Never? Huh. Right. So, that explains a lot of my deep-seated anxiety and problems. <laughs> oh, hmm. thanks, mom. <laughs> but <laughs> as one get gets older, you start to realize that hey, maybe I should have taken more of a risk here and there. Yes. So anyway, but we're getting off topic. It's okay. But, th- but it's good. Yeah. I uh, let's talk about why people should watch this movie. Okay. I can t- I can tell you my interpretation of that, and then I want to ask you one more thing, because and and also this is how this goes. At least the format of my show, it's not like a movie review. It's okay to talk about things within the movie because they naturally you could expand them. Like when we were talking about going to move to the Bahamas, that's because it's coming from the movie. You understand? Mm-hmm. I don't know if you. Well, I think you understand. Anyways, why do I think people should watch this movie? That's what you asked me, right? Correct. Um, my opinion of it is that, well, one, it's just, it's, it's a very good escapist movie because like they're in a, I mean, one, they're in a beautiful location. Like, I mean, the movie has a lot of eye candy to look at and I'm not just talking about Paul Walker and Jessica Alba. Uh, of course, me being a dude, Jessica Alba, I'm sorry, Zola, but it's like, it was in 2005, she was in her prime. So for, you'll forgive me. Um, <laughs> as was Paul Walker for you ladies that are listening that's right and actually I, I have to interject on that you should be proud mom you are the first lady I've had on the podcast yay yay Woo! <laughs> go women I'm honored <laughs> hey you have to have the best woman on there and who better to have than your own mother oh. I mean literally think about it the podcast that's I wouldn't right. exist if it wasn't for you Oh, stop. I mean, right. biologically, that's how it goes. We don't have to talk about that, though. That might gross out people. Um, anyway, so I talked about the escapist nature of the movie because it is shot in a beautiful location. It's got beautiful young people. They're, they're living an exciting life by a lot of people's standards. I mean, they live on a beach. They go to go diving and swimming with sharks and doing all this exotic stuff that a lot of people would think of as being exotic. So it's fun to watch. 
on that aspect alone. But then I also think that as an action suspense thriller, there actually is a, some pretty good tension-filled moments throughout the movie, especially as they kind of get deeper into the the problem that they have come across with these drugs and everything like that. It actually, I think, creates some decent suspense. And so the combination of that, the setting, the location, and the characters, and then just, of course, um, you know, just some of the twists and turns in the story, because I think the story actually had some decent twists and turns to it. I didn't see everything coming the first time I saw this. I would agree with that. Some mystery, um, some, oh, what's the term? Uh, surprises. Yeah, some twists. That you didn't see coming. Um, I'm going to interject this, too, uh, because we were talking about risk-taking and then people, you know, uh, going somewhere. Like, maybe traveling through Europe for a year. Take off a year from your life. But, back to their characters. Uh, they... I think they mentioned Jared's age. He's 29. Yeah. So uh, they are not married. Um, there's a part in the movie where she's given this ring without a stone. Mm. It was from somebody that... Uh, Josh Brolin. Yeah. was uh, Had found treasure. Anyway, they were kind of at this... Like any relationship, I don't want to stereotype, but when you're together you know you love each other but they hadn't they're they're almost ready to go to that next level which would be marriage which 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 sorry i don't mean to say which which uh then i think there's a level of maturity and they're like okay uh she's sh doing shark shows at the sea world like place and he's doing scuba diving lessons and um you know they want they want something i felt like they wanted something more and that's where looking for this treasure um would maybe provide them more of the nest egg or whatever that they were looking for well <clears throat> i think it's... and and wait i got i know sorry i interrupted you you're oh. fine but they they weren't they're not a traditional couple and that they're going to go join the corporate world and live that lifestyle i mean mm -hmm. Well, so this is an interesting thing that we can talk about, and then, and then we'll keep going, because I think it's actually a, a valid point to talk about. So, like my mom was saying, the characters, Jared and Sam, they, they live a fairly simple life, meaning that they are not driven solely by money in order for them to be happy. Like, they're not very careerist, central, centric type people. I, I don't think they're trying to make a crap ton of money and, you know, just live the American dream and, and all that kind of thing. But... However, like my mom said, I mean, money, uh, whether you think it's fortunate or not, is a necessity to have. I mean, you have to be able to pay some kinds of bills. You have to be able to pay for lodging and place to stay and food and comfort and security. And there's all these other different types of things. But the, I guess the question I'm asking you is, do you ever think, you know, like, like what, what does money, I guess, mean to you? I mean, like, do you think that, like, a person has to have a lot of it in order to be successful? Or do you think that someone can have next to nothing and just live off of breadcrumbs but still lead a relatively happy life? Well, like I mentioned, um, we watched the movie prior to the podcast because, yes, it is one of my favorite, has been one of my favorite movies, but... Um, I wanted to refresh my memory with more of the details, but um, I, I I compared it, but it's a really it's a I, I can't think of the word. Um, what? It's not a really spot on comparison, but I compared it to "It's a Wonderful Life" in that, like. Uh, the character George Bailey. I mean, he George didn't, Bailey. <laughs> right? Yeah, he didn't think he had a wonderful life, and then when he, you know, had to go through this journey, then he realized that you know what, and so this was similar in that, uh, you know, he had this Jared, the character Jared Paul Walker had a a lifelong friend that he thought he could trust, but he was a lawyer. Um, he comes to visit, and he also comes with a lady that he had just literally in the movie had just picked up and brought her with him. So 
we have her in the mix of these four people. They know nothing about her. Um, Bryce, the Jared's friend, just had picked her up. I mean, they he's I think he said they were together 14 hours. Yeah. Like they met in Vegas. Yeah. They flew to the Bahamas. I mean, they're kind of both a little bit. And sleazy. so they're kind of sleazy people a little bit. But Jared, it's his lifelong friend, so yes. he thinks that he can trust him completely, wholeheartedly. Yeah. And then they throw this other lady into the mixture, mm-hmm. and. Uh, it's just uh, another example of be careful who you associate with and who you let in your inner circle until they prove that they're trustworthy. I hear you, but you didn't answer the question. Oh, what was it? <laughs> God. <laughs> the, the, the question was, is when we're talking about money, does somebody need to be very career driven and solely out to make a lot of money in order to be defined as successful or can somebody live a fairly quaint life and not really have much but but they're happy well jordan yes i think it's proven over and over again that money does not bring happiness i mean right right there yeah so so it's okay so you're saying that somebody doesn't have to have a ton of money to to be happy you should not judge a person, uh, you should not just, you should not judge a person's success by how much money they have in the bank. That's I, what I'm saying. And that's all I wanted to see. That's all I wanted to see. That's good. It's good to know. Interesting thing to think about. I'd be interested to hear what my listening audience thinks about that question too. Um, let's talk about the cast. So... Paul Walker, got to start with him. Um, rest in peace. He unfortunately passed at the age of 40 in November of 2013. Uh, very, very sad. And, and also, I think, just extremely ironic that he, he died in a, in a car, car accident as well, just given the fact that he was most notably famous for his Fast and Furious movies, which are all about racing and, and things like that. But that's right. neither here nor there. But two, two things very sad. Yes. His age, forty. Yeah, he was talented, mm-hmm. and when he was getting into this car, he was leaving a charity event that he mm-hmm. uh, sponsored. Yeah, yeah. So he it was, was really. Um, I, I think anybody that loved movies, actors, um, everybody mourned for Paul Walker. I think so. I mean, it wasn't like, uh, I mean, I'm not like, I don't want to get stuck on, on, on his passing, but it wasn't, uh, what am I trying to say? I mean, I think the reason people were very sad about him is that the guy had a reputation not as necessarily maybe the best actor in the world, but he had a reputation of just being a really good hearted giving person. I think he cemented that kind of reputation with his organization, Reach Out Worldwide, the nonprofit organization that he founded. Um, he's been into marine biology his whole life, his whole life, and been involved with ocean conservation efforts. A lot of different things. Okay, my mom's giving me the time out symbol. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> I would disagree. Disagree. And I would not agree with the critics. I do believe that he was a good actor, oh, and he's no, an I, excellent actor. I Let's go he, back to the cast. Okay. Uh, okay. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Slow down. Okay. So first, I can disagree on the podcast, can't I? Yes. Okay. I okay. First, I didn't say that I thought he was a bad actor. I'm just saying I don't think he was most widely regarded for solely his acting skills. That's all I'm saying. Take that for what you will. Now, I did pull actually some interesting thoughts on Paul Walker. Just some things I wanted to let you know if you didn't actually know it about him, because I, I was surprised. Because I tried to, I do try to do some research before these episodes, so I'm not just going in blind. Um, so one, Paul Walker's from Santa Barbara, California. I don't know if you knew that. And then, interestingly enough, too, apparently, I don't know at what point in his life, but I thought I'd share this with you, but he actually eventually became a non-denominational Christian, despite the fact that he was raised by Mormons. Oh, really? Yes. I did not know that. Yeah, I thought I, th- I think that's kind of interesting. I mean, I don't think it's anything he really talked about a lot, at least publicly, but hmm. it's it's an interesting thing to think about. Um, he also, I actually didn't know, practiced uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and he actually had a brown belt in it. And then I found out that, uh, I think, is the word posthumously? Like when the person gets something after they, yes. they passed? Um, he was awarded a black belt. Um, 
after after his passing. So he had done Brazilian Jiu Jitsu on the side, which I think is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I mentioned that he is, I would say, a humanitarian because he did. Um, he is a founder of the nonprofit organization Reach Out Worldwide. Um, they've done support for like hurricane relief. Um, they did a. He he actually was on the ground like with his brother Cody Walker. Uh, and I think maybe he has a couple brothers, but they all helped out with hurricane support and cleanup and debris and, and all this kind of stuff. Um, and then the other thing I was going to mention about him is that all the, all the while, while he was an actor, he's been on record saying that he thought he was going to quit it at like any time because he just never really thought he was going to actually be able to make a, a steady living out of it. And he always had like his foot in the door for marine biology. And he, he actually wanted to be a marine biologist for a long time. Um, but I think what I'm happy about with that and just him, yes, yes, I know my mom's thinking I'm, what, 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 what? Oh, am I lingering on this too much? She's saying yes. Back to the four characters. Back to the four characters. Like, you know, this is what happens when I have my mother on my freaking show. She's going to critique how I do every little thing. Isn't that great? <laughs> Are you, do you disagree with that? Come on, speak up. Oh, don't be shy. And no, I don't, I can't say. <laughs> We'll talk about that, whatever that means. Okay. <clears throat> the point is, Paul Walker is sorely missed, and I thought he is good in this movie. I mean, I think I think he's pretty good. He's not just doing his Brian O'Connor character from Fast and Furious. I think he is doing his own unique character for this. And he does well with action and and roles along those lines. I, I, I don't know. What, how would, how, what, would, what do you think about him in this movie? Plus he's eye candy. Yeah, there it is. I I was I, I was waiting for it. I'm like, okay, she's not gonna talk about his acting, but she is gonna talk about his six pack. No. So he looks I mean, he looks good. I mean he's got got good physique for sure. We need um, to get back to why people should watch this movie. Well, Jessica Alba. We can talk about that. I, I'm talking about the cast, so I know Jordan, but we but, should but, talk about more on the storyline. Okay. And well, you go ahead. You wanna drive? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, then let me take my show back, please. Please and thank you. Okay, Jessica Alba. What did you think about her in this movie? I loved her in this movie. And? Um. She had virtue. She was beautiful. Well, she was certainly, I would say, the moral center of the movie. She had the best character in terms of just her principles and what she yeah. believed in out of everybody. Even Paul Walker. And then, because people made bad choices, um, it put her, the innocent one, uh, in harm's way. I mean, big time harm's way. Yeah. Speaking of harm's way, what did you think about Scott Conn? Bryce. <laughs> what do you think about him? Isn't he a great guy? Yeah. He's a, can I say turd? He, yes. His character was a turd in the movie. Yeah. I, Caused a lot of angst. Yep. In the in the circle of the four characters, unnecessary drama. Um, bit of a showboat too, if you notice that about him. Because like, I mean, I, I'm actually surprised you didn't comment this. So, fun fact about my mom: any time I shit you not, any time we watch a movie together before we start, Jordan, how tall is he? <laughs> is he married? When, when, when? She, she always... It's not so much if they're married. I just like to know the actor's height. But you don't like short but... short actors a lot of the time. Um, or at the very least, like you, you get surprised when they're short. Maybe that's a lot. Because he's a, he's a tiny... Because it has nothing really to do with their ability. But... No, but he is a small person. But I, I, what I'm getting at with that is that I kind of wonder if like the reason his character is partly like supposed to be super arrogant is because he's a little bit insecure about his height. Maybe I'm reaching. Mm, no? no? No. No. It's basically because of uh, his occupation, I hate to being say. A, being a criminal defense attorney? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, let's go back to the movie. Sure. So he comes down there, and he's supposed to be this hotshot lawyer, and him and the lady, well, lady. Well, the character's name loosely, is Amanda. Yeah, Amanda. Um, they go and st- they when they land in the Bahamas and then uh, Jared and Sam I don't know where Sam lives they never really divulge where she lives so they, she lives with Paul, do they Paul live Paul together Walker? on yeah, that they, boat in that RV that little thing the RV, oh the yeah 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 they had yeah. an RV and then he had a boat so yeah. okay yeah. All right. 
And then so when Bryce and Amanda arrive, he has, uh, he is able to stay in this uh, multi-million dollar on the beach uh, front house yep. for a criminal that he um, represented. Yeah, the guy was busted for racketeering and money laundering. And yeah. the way he floated the bill to the to his friend's law firm was by putting up his house and property for, yeah. for collateral. So a yacht, a beautiful home, and then two jet skis like Jordan liked to mention. Anyway, the jet ski part... In the movie is one of my favorites. Yeah, I can. We can talk about that now. Okay. Oh, this is the time. <laughs> of no, all you're doing a terrible. Lives. Well, then let's hear you do it. Why don't you just bring it up on your? I can't. I'll probably get it pulled down for copyright. Oh, I crap. can't do that. Anyway, well, it's hey, a phenomenal, I, phenomenal song. I just embarrassed myself doing crappy time of my life singing. Let's yeah. go. Uh, let's do it. Anyway, it's a fabulous scene with jet skis, and they had just arrived, and they're they're having the time of their lives because they get to stay at this beautiful place. I can't tell you how many times my mom has seen that scene. She's like, "Jordan, crank it, crank it," because <laughs> like yeah, it I, is a. Do you know the artist that sings that song? Paul Van Dyke, I think, is who the artist is. And what's the name of it? Uh, time of our lives. Yeah, check it out. Yeah, it's when much better than... When you're done than... listening to our podcast, check out that song. It's it's really awesome. Yeah, I think Pip... And don't confuse it with the stupid Pitbull song, because he has one called Time of Our Lives. No. It's not... No, no. Mm-hmm. This this is much better. But, yeah. anywho, yes, my mom loves that scene, because it reminds her of her glory days when she was young and happy. No. Oh, I'm, it's just... I'm teasing you. Yeah. Oh. I... No? Like... What do, you, what do you, okay, she's just smiling. It's just at one me. of the favorite parts of my movie. Oh, <sighs> God, my grammar. Oh, my gosh. It's one Your of grammar? the favorite parts. Oh, my gosh. I can't even say it. It's one of my favorite scenes in the movie. There. Okay. I mean, I'll, it's all good. Last character I want to talk about, then we're going to continue. What do you think about Josh Brolin? Oh, boy. The villain. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's pretty creepy in the movie. Yeah, he, um, well, gosh, I feel like if we talk about too much, then it's going to give away the movie and maybe I listeners. Mean, this movie came out in 2005. People have had a chance to see it. I know, but there's probably a lot of people that haven't seen it. And we'll get into that because I had asked Jordan, was this a blockbuster blockbuster no. movie? And he said no. So I'm thinking yeah. that a lot of people have not seen it. And aren't we here... Today, I mean, the movie had we a... would both we would both recommend this movie. Sure. Right? Yeah. Yes. Do you agree? Why would I be talking about a movie that I think is? I mean, I might talk about a bad movie on this I podcast you would. someday. But no, I've only talked about movies I like on here so far, anyway. Okay. But remember, this is new to me. So what's new to you? This conversation I have never, talking no, with the person. <laughs> I just have not done this before, so I'm not sure how it's supposed to work. But just anyways. be yourself. That's it. Okay. That's all you got to do. All right. So now Josh Brolin. I, I I mean Josh Brolin is a fantastic actor. He's very versatile. He can play good guys, bad guys, everything in between. He's worked with the Coen Brothers. I mean the guys. Was he in the movie um, mm-hmm. Only the Brave? Yes. Okay. Yes, I showed which, you that movie. Which. Um, can, since we mentioned his name, can yeah. we yeah, mention I mean, that movie too? Sure. We could, I mean, I would recommend that you Only the Brave would talk is a good about movie. that in yes. a future podcast with somebody. That's a very good movie. And, and, and I mean, if you're talking about blockbusters, I mean, comparatively to Into the Blue, Only the Brave flew way under people's radar. There's a lot of people I, I feel I mean, like again, that don't talk yeah. about that movie. Yeah. And I don't know why, because it's, I mean. It's, it's a really, hard movie to watch. Yeah, but it's important. Yes. Those the, the characters in that movie, I mean, it's based off real events, too. It's a true story. We're not here to talk about that. But, yeah. yes, periodically in these shows, I will talk about other movies I like. So, yeah, it's a good one. And my mom's right. You can you can check it out. Listen to my mother. It has her approval. Can I interject one other thing? Since it, this, You since don't have to in, ask me for permission. Since you can Into just, the you Blue was not considered a blockbuster... Why was it not considered a blockbuster? So, I have a couple of reasons that I would think. So, one, the movie came out in September of 2005. Now, you have to understand that movies back then, anyway, I mean, there wasn't, like, Netflix and things like that. And typically speaking, from what I understand for, like, a release calendar, September is, like, 
kind of the middle ground for movies. It's it's not like during the summer, the height of like summer movie season, but it's not during like fall or like Oscar award winning movies typically that come out in like or October, good movies November. come out at Christmas too. September always is kind of like a just we're gonna put a movie here if we think it's just an okay movie. That's typically how studios tended to utilize the month of September, and I. I don't. I wouldn't say it was like a bomb bomb because the movie had a fifty million dollar budget and its box office gross worldwide was forty four million. So it didn't like lose a ton of money, but it didn't really like break even either. It just kind of like barely barely made what it's what was spent on it. And critics were also pretty harsh on it at the time. I think they just thought it was just a kind of flashy, dumb, you know, you know, beach movie with like hot people. I don't think they really took. But it, it had that a seriously. good story, so I don't understand. But I think Jordan and I would both agree that you can't always go by what the critics tell you. No, I mean, I like a lot of critics' voices, but, I mean, a person's opinion is just that. It's a person's opinion. It doesn't make it right or wrong. I always encourage people, check it out for yourself. And, and let's go back to Josh Brolin's Brolin, yes. character I kept Into laughing. the Blue. You, you kept calling him James Brolin in the movie. Oh. James is his father. I know. Yeah. He's more from your generation than, than mine. Let's talk about his character in Into the Blue. Okay. Talk about him. No, you talk about him. No, first. you talk about him. <laughs> I don't what do you want me to talk about? He was he was sleazy. I mean, there's that scene well, where I don't want to give away too much because like I said, my mom wants people to see this movie, but he, Yeah, but we already de- I mean, we've already pointed out that he is a bad guy. Yeah. So well, but you don't know that at the beginning. Right? Okay, well, I guess, yeah, I'm sorry. So we gave it away. Yeah, we gave that part away. He's a bad guy. But, I don't know. Um, he ha- he has he definitely has a sinister quality about him, and you don't always really know what he's thinking. His, he, does a, he does unpredictability well in, in terms of, like, if he's going to, like, blow up on you with anger, or if he's just going to be so subtle and subdued. I don't really know. But I liked him. He's a coat. Uh, well, I don't, I don't want to say Did- too much. Did you notice that he was also another person in Jared's life that pretended to be a friend and also manipulated and tried to compromise uh, yeah. Jared's dreams? Yeah, yeah. And I make mean, fun of it, even. I mean, right from the beginning of the movie, they established that he's a rival. Not an enemy, per se, but he is someone that is in competition with Jared. He's trying to also find treasure. They established that, you remember. Yes. Anywho, what I wanted to talk about also is just the uh, blah, 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 blah. treasure hunting. I think it's interesting, uh, especially at the end of the movie, when they talk about how there's like $6 billion worth of treasure out there. Have you ever, like, would you ever be interested in going on a boat, going to get the treasure? Did you ever try to find treasure as a kid? Of course. Tell me more. Well, in my day, yes, before computers and cell phones and video games, we used our imagination. So we would, like, dig in the dirt. I mean... I digged in the dirt. No, we would, like, go places and just dig for things because we would pretend to be archaeologists. Like Indiana Jones? And... Well, and in and living in Iowa, I mean, sometimes, you know, you'd, it, my parents took me camping a lot. So we would dig and try and find, like, Indian arrowheads that wasn't out of the, I mean, it wasn't, like, impossible. You could find them, but. Did Grandpa ever get, like, a metal detector? I feel no. like that's, like, a thing people do. They walk along the beach and, and they look for things. I what? saw people do that in Brazil when I was there, actually. One thing in the movie, though, that I did have a question about, because they they found this shipwreck. You have to make a claim on it. Yeah. But there's also the aspect of when you find things, I mean, okay, so somebody claims it, but who owns that history? So, so the person that claims it then, do they sell it? To like the Smith the Smithsonian, I can't even say it, but sometimes I think uh, things that are considered priceless are supposed to not belong to anybody. Mm. So it just kind of made me 
wonder well, wonder how that process works but i would say it just, yeah yeah i guess i would say because like i am not going to even pretend i'm an expert on how like deep sea salvaging works or if you find something from like the 1800s what you would do who you would sell it to how that whole thing works the movie talks about it but i guess what i would say in the case of into the blue is that the the ship in particular the sunken ship that they are trying to make a claim on they are almost very certain that it has a big bounty of gold in it which that's at least like an actual like currency so because of that they could obviously probably get some sort of monetary value on it but i understand what you're saying where it's like if it was a ship that just say had like priceless pieces of artwork on it that's not cash you know it's not money you know does somebody you know does, like, oh that brings a good that? point maybe if you find like things like that like bars of gold or old coins you know maybe that part you can get repaid but the artifacts mm. um go into a museum or into something where everyone can enjoy i mean titanic is yeah. another example i'm always just curious like it, it makes me just think how many things are likely buried in the ocean floor that we have no idea about well it just said at the end of the movie six billion dollars yeah, worth what? of shipwrecks and <clears throat> pirates that stole and their money and treasure chests jordan treasure chests <laughs> okay <laughs> Let's talk. Let's actually let's talk about this real quick. I, I gotta sh I gotta share a funny story because if we're talking. But about, wait, oh, wait, wait. Okay, okay. What? I want to go back to the movie as far as um, because I'm, I grew up in Iowa. Yep. I live a sheltered life, but there were parts in the movie where the Bahama, like Coast Guard, would interject, and question. You know, they would um question people like the four characters were yeah. on a boat and then question what they're doing yeah. uh, what their motive you know i mean they because they're i guess they're uh, guarding the borders guarding well, guarding against yeah. drug dealers yeah. so i learned that i mean they in one part of the movie it said uh that drug dealers would like dump yes um their load of drugs yep. in a location in the ocean and then they come back and get it yeah because if you think about um, and it maybe that's... it's to throw off the police on their well i would say but I mean, anyway it was it was educational that way i would say now i'm not a drug dealer to be very clear about that i don't know much about that stuff but from a drug dealer's perspective if you think about it it would make sense probably for those larger cartels and those, you know, nasty drug kingpins that are out there, which I'm sure that on, in all honesty, they likely probably still do this type of thing. But if you think about it, there's a lot less witnesses around the ocean, especially out in the middle of it. So yeah. I feel like from like their perspective, they probably see it as a safer means to secure their cargo and get it without the authorities, you know, getting wind of it and whatnot. Cause Coast Guard, I imagine there's probably less Coast Guard than there is police officers, right? I don't know. You don't like drugs, though, at all. Bad. Yes. Just, you can comment on that. I'm not, like, interrogating you. Well. They're bad. You, you said multiple times in this movie, you're just like, oh, those drugs, are, they're horrible. Wah. Well, this is the mom part in me, but um, mom, there so, yeah. is never a happy ending with drugs involved. Yeah. In my opinion. I would agree. I would agree. But... Yes. So, another thing I wanted to talk about as well, and I was going to mention this because you talked about pirates and, and everything like that. I have to talk about the Pirates of the Caribbean Dead, Man to, uh, Dead Man's Chest uh, theatrical story. You, Yeah, don't you know what I'm getting at? Oh, wait, I just got told I can't talk about that, so. No. Guess, well, okay. Gotta, gotta move on. Um, um, I liked when <laughs> Sam and <laughs> Jared, they actually did research about this ship that they thought they had found. And uh, there was actually like historical, um, there was a historical story yeah. behind the pirate and his, you know, there was, a love involved in that too 
Yeah, but so. the friends didn't care about the history. They just cared no. about the money. But I'm saying that Sam and Jared, um, it wasn't just finding the treasure. I mean, they were interested in the story about this ship and who who sailed it, uh, what the captain and the crew, what their story was. So I thought that was a neat part of the movie. Sure. Let me ask, uh, and because I want to start winding this down, because I, I I can tell you're just like oh, I need to I need to get up, Jordan, end this. <laughs> um, but let's let's see if Paul Walker was around because I know you like Paul Walker quite a bit. If you could meet him, what would you ask him? Oh gosh. Yeah. Um, just what what would you, what would you talk to him about? I'm always curious about this people and celebrities and what they would do. I don't know. I guess I would ask him what Hollywood was really like. Um. Well, and I know we're not talking about uh, Into the Blue, but another favorite movie, one of my absolute favorite movies is Eight Below with Paul Walker. That's a true story, I think. Um, and yeah. I think back to his character, you were saying, uh, he looks like he he's, I don't want to say he's scrawny. He's, he's lean and he's young. But I think what I really liked about his character was that he had to learn. I mean, he had his moral uh, foundation, but then all these things started happening. But I really liked when he would... Um, show his macho side and like i mean he would stand up to the james or the oh i did almost did it the uh -huh. josh brolin character uh -huh. um he would actually stand up to anybody yeah he's um, protective yeah but he i don't know i i really liked his character in this movie you think i'm macho <laughs> yes jordan yeah you're just saying that because we're recording Yes, you're very uh, creative and talented, and you're my son, so... That doesn't mean I'm macho. Jordan. <laughs> I'm just giving you shit. I'm teasing you. It's okay. You can laugh. <laughs> no? Just... Okay. She's just smiling to me and not helping. She's pointing at the clock, too, so... I'm, no, I'm uh, actually like, pointing you... at your agenda. Like, have we it's covered not everything? A, it's not like a legit agenda. I do oh. outlines sometimes. Thanks for s telling my beauty, viewing audience how my system works. Thank well, you. Well, everybody has a system, I would think. Anywho... I don't know, you'd be surprised. Uh, let's... Uh, how would you rate this movie on a 1 to 10, Jordan? Not, this isn't a rating show. That's not the point of it. We're just supposed to have imp interesting conversations about, the, about themes from from the movie that's that's all but we can't rate it you can rate it go ahead why don't you, why don't you give it your rating I'm, I'm not, that's not what i'm here for but you go ahead well i thought if we would rate it it would encourage people to check it out then go ahead and give it a rating um i would give it an eight out of ten out of ten uh-huh i mean i don't know i i don't know if i'd go that high like if i mean you're asking my opinion i'd probably give it like a I don't know, six and a half seven no kidding. Why? Eh, I mean, I don't know. Like, it's it's an enjoyable movie. It's, it's fine, but it's not, I don't know, it's not, I wouldn't say it's like a particularly deep movie. I'm not saying everything has to have a bunch of meaning to it, but I don't know. I thought it had a lot of meaning to it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I thought it was well written, too. I liked the turns and the twists and the, I mean, it, it's a movie about good and evil, but I liked how you had to figure out who, which characters were forthright and which ones were. Um... You got pretty mad. I just I was cracking up during the parts of the movie where Bryce's character would yet do another blunder that would ruin the group's uh, situation because yeah. he made, he made a lot of mistakes, and the woman with him is not really the best of people as well. And you would get so, I, I I joke about it because like you're just like oh my gosh like can you believe it. I would smack him in the face. <laughs> you, you, yeah. I mean, I, if I had act, mom, if Bryce, pretend I'm Bryce, would you be proud of me if that was your son? No. <laughs> <laughs> you would, you would not be, right? No. No. I think you. But he does come 
around, kind of, I guess. I mean, at the end, he takes that spear right. in the ocean when he gets... You, you thought uh, he was going to die from that, but... Yeah. You done? <laughs> I th- I th- she's done. I, I think I, I've exhausted her energies today, so... No, I don't think so. I just... Did you enjoy being on a podcast? Yes. Do you get? Do you kind of understand it a little bit more now, like what we do? Yeah. Yes. So yes the, and no. Okay. What about the no? Let's let's figure out what you don't get. Let's let's talk um, about. I guess I thought more that it's to promote the movie. No, that's not what I'm doing. Okay. I mean, if like if by like just a byproduct, like somebody happens to listen to an episode and they're like, oh, like I like what he said about that movie, I'll go ahead and check it out. That's great, but that's not really what I'm here for. I guess that I'll explain this because this might actually be beneficial for the listening audience. The way that I structure these episodes is I will select one movie and that will be the, the theme. That'll be the, the main subject throughout the entirety of the episode. But then what I do is I talk about different aspects of the movie, the underlying themes, messages, etc., etc., and just basically expand on them and give my commentary about what I think it means, tie it back to the movie, uh, and then maybe even put some of my own personal thoughts and feelings uh, just from my own life uh, experiences into the episode. And then if I have somebody else on, like my mom or anybody else, uh, I think the conversation will be interesting uh, will be interesting enough that people will walk away from this being like, hmm, that person gave me some interesting things to think about. I didn't think about it that way before. And I love movies even more than I ever did before. That would be like my... If I had a mission statement, I guess that's the botched version of it. Something along those lines. Do you approve, Mom? Yes, Jordan, I do. <laughs> Great. All right. Um, yeah. I, I have to say, final, though, final I mean, just Mom. because I'm, yeah, closing thoughts. Uh, and it's, it's the mom and me again. Honesty is the best policy, and everything in life is a choice. The friends that you make. The friends that you keep, um, and I'm glad that I'm, well, I'm just interjecting this. I'm glad that Hollywood, you know, um, I like that Hollywood makes mess or makes movies that have a message that will help people with their lives. Yeah. But I also want it to be entertaining. Um, I don't, I don't think know. I almost movie... lost my train of thought where I was going. With it's okay. This. I can I can help you wrap this up. I think what you're trying to get at, or at least this is how I mean I feel this way about movies. I always kind of get a bit bothered a bit when some when some people are just like ah movies like it's the entertainment industry. Even when people say that, I'm like not every movie needs to quote unquote entertain me. Sometimes I like to watch a movie just because it's giving me a deep emotional reaction on something, and it might not even be something pleasant, but it's a reaction all the same that makes me think and talk about something. And movies can be really great for that. It's not just entertainment. That's all I'm trying to get at. Yes. Yes? It's, that, that's it? I just want to, tell, I want to tell people to check out the movie. Go it's ahead. a give, really give good movie. Give me your last movie. glowing endorsement. Go ahead. It's just a really good movie. I think you should check it out. Well, you heard it here on Screen Speak and from my mother that wanted to use this whole episode to plug all the reasons to watch Into the Blue. It's fine. And, you know, I'm teasing you. Yes. Come on. Say, say some final thoughts. Come on. I did say my final thoughts. That's it? Yes. Okay, well, I guess I'm just going to go ahead and wrap this up. But hey, I appreciate everybody out there for giving this a listen. Uh, If you have not done so already, go ahead and click follow on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Google Podcasts, download episodes, check out the YouTube channel, and check out the Instagram, simply titled at Screenspeak Podcast. That's all the reminder of the plugs, and my mom keeps sticking up her finger. I guess she does have one (laughs) final thing to say. I would make a suggestion for your podcast, maybe oh, a Lord listener, of, but oh, I don't, I don't know, Lord I don't know how they would get this message to you because this is a part of the podcast where I don't know how it works. But what if somebody gave you a movie title that they touch them, um, that they think that other people should check out? Um, 
are they able to do that? And then you could check it out and then invite another guest and then you guys could analyze it? Yeah, so I would say that's something I actually offer all the time. So to anybody that I ever do invite to actually be a guest on this, it's one of the first things I ask them is, what's the movie that you would want to talk about? Because I can talk about just about any and all movies. I can. But when I have someone on, I just feel like they're going to be more comfortable talking about something that they have a vested interest in or they care about. You know what I mean? So, for instance, the Roadrunner episode I did, the documentary about Anthony Bourdain, that was recommended to me by Adam Wall. I hadn't seen oh, I, okay. I hadn't seen that before, and so I watched it, and then we talked about it together. So yes. yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. But yes, yeah. you would have to see it, and then of course whatever guest you would have on. So you yeah. both, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, it's a given. Duh. Sorry. No, it's not. It's, I mean, no questions or stupid questions. It's fine. All right. Thank you, Jordan, for having your mother on the podcast. I hope I haven't embarrassed you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's all good. No, you're my mom, and honestly, I'll put I'll put the this is my last thing I'll say. In all sincerity, without getting gushy, it is nice that you are actually showing support for me doing something like this, or or to anybody out there. It means a lot that you're actually doing something that I don't think you would presumably normally do. So I appreciate it. Well, you're welcome, Jordan. It was a little out of my comfort zone, but thank you, listeners. I hope that uh, Jordan's followers keeps growing and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. <laughs> All right, everybody. That's it. Thanks for listening. I'll